welcome back to Biology with Gracie. So today's video is going to be my second video on carbohydrates for A-level biology. So the content that we're going to be covering today is monosaccharides and disaccharides. Specifically, we're going to be talking about hexose and pentose sugars, glucose uh, in itself, and then chemical structures of monosaccharides and disaccharides. We're then going to be talking about polysaccharides and we're going to be in particular talking about starch which is made up of amylose and amylopectin, glycogen and also cellulose and we're going to be discussing their structures and their functions. So pentose and hexose sugars. So monosaccharides are classified as either hexose or pentose sugars depending on the number of carbon atoms. So we've got pentose sugars and they are made up of five carbon atoms and these are ribose, uh, so for example in RNA, and deoxyribose, for example in DNA. We've then got hexose sugars and these have six carbon atoms. So we've got alpha glucose, beta glucose, fructose and galactose. So now we're going to talk about glucose in a bit more detail. So glucose is a very important carbohydrate because it is the main substrate for respiration. So it's a single monosaccharide and it makes up a variety of different polysaccharides, which we're going to talk about later on in this video. So glucose's structure is related to its function. So I mentioned that it's the main substrate for respiration, which means it's the main energy source in animals and plants. And it has a structure which makes it soluble, which is good because that means it can be easily transported around the animal or the plant. And its chemical bonds contain lots of energy, which is really useful. So as I said in the previous slide, it's a hexo sugar, so it's got six carbon atoms. And there's actually two isomers of glucose. So we've got alpha glucose and we've got beta glucose. So as you can see, the structures of these two isomers are very similar, but there is a slight difference. So as you can see here, we've got our first carbon. And for alpha glucose, we've got the hydrogen group um, above the ring. And then we've got this hydroxyl group below the ring. And then for beta glucose, here we've got our first carbon, we've got our, our hydroxyl group above and then we've got our hydrogen below. So it's a very slight difference, but this uh, really changes up the overall structure of the glucose molecule. And you do need to make sure that you remember the differences in these structures. So now we're going to go over some monosaccharide structures. So here we've got alpha glucose, which we've already discussed. We've then got fructose and it sort of has this pentagon um, structure, but I do want to really um, emphasize here that these are all hexo sugars as they have six carbon atoms. So if we go through um, the number of carbon atoms of fructose, you'll see that there's actually six. So we've got one, two, three, four, five and six. So don't let and this sort of pentagon look confuse you. It, fructose is a hexo sugar. We've then got beta glucose, which we discussed, and then we've got galactose. So the general formula for monosaccharides is CH2O and then N, and N is any number from three to seven. So as I said, they're all hexo sugars, so they've all got six carbon atoms, and they are usually sweet and soluble. So it's important that you practice uh, drawing out these structures and make sure that you go over them and remember them, as you may be asked in an exam to draw out these individual structures or maybe draw out a couple of them and show how um, they bond together via a condensation reaction to form a disaccharide. So it's important that you, you make sure that you go over these structures. Um, if you want to hear more about condensation hydrolysis reactions and how monosaccharides bond together, then you can watch my previous video on carbohydrates, which I will link in the description below and in the cards. So now we're going to go over the disaccharide structures. So first we've got lactose. So lactose is made up of galactose and alpha glucose, and it's got a glycosidic bond in the middle just here. And if you want to hear more about how the disaccharides are formed by our condensation reactions and how they are broken apart back to monosaccharides via hydrolysis reactions, then make sure to check out my first video again. So we've then got sucrose. So sucrose is made up of alpha glucose and fructose. 
and then we've got maltose and that is made up of alpha glucose and another alpha glucose molecule so again make sure that you remember which uh, monosaccharides make up these disaccharides and there's more detail on that in my first carbohydrates video so now we're going to talk about polysaccharides so you need to know about cellulose starch including the structures amylose and amylopectin which make up starch and glycogen so i'm just going to do a sort of overall summary of these um polysaccharides so cellulose and starch are both found in plants whereas glycogen is found in animals cellulose is made up of beta glucose monosaccharides whereas starch and glycogen are made up of alpha glucose Cellulose and amylose have 1,4 glycosidic bonds, whereas amylopectin and glycogen have both 1,4 and 1,6 glycosidic bonds. Cellulose and amylose don't have any branches, whereas amylopectin and glycogen do. And they are all predominantly insoluble in water. So now we're going to talk about starch in a bit more detail. So starch is a mixture of two polysaccharides of alpha glucose, and these are known as amylose and amylopectin. So starch is insoluble in water. So what this means is that it prevents water from entering the cells by osmosis so that swelling does not occur. So this makes starch a really good molecule for storage. So the first polysaccharide which makes up the polysaccharide of starch is amylose. And amylose, as I said before, is made up of alpha glucoses with 1,4 glycosidic bonds. So it makes up starch alongside amylopectin. It's a really long unbranched chain of alpha glucose joined by 1,4 glycosidic bonds. It has a coiled structure due to the angles of the glycosidic bonds. And it's really compact, so it's good for storage and it can fit more into a small, into a small space. Next, we've got amylopectin. So this is alpha glucose molecules with 1,4 and 1,6 glycosidic bonds. So it makes up starch alongside amylose. It's a long branch chain of alpha glucose, as I said, joined by 1,4 and 1,6 glycosidic bonds. And it has side branches, and these side branches allow enzymes to get to and to break down the glycosidic bonds really easily and really quickly. So this means that glucose and essentially energy can be released quickly. So now we're going to talk about cellulose. So cellulose is made up of beta glucoses with 1,4 glycosidic bonds. So this is the structure here. And as you can see, the molecules bond together via condensation reactions. Again, make sure to check out my first carbohydrates video to find out more about that. So the structure, as you can see here, actually shows that every two glucoses are flipped. So this allows for them to bond together. So you can kind of see here that here we've got our first molecule, which is the normal way, normal way around. And then this second molecule here is actually flipped. So you can see we've got CH2OH here and the on the other one, the CH2OH is actually at the top. So every second um, beta glucose is flipped in order for it to uh, accommodate the bonding for cellulose to be formed correctly. So here you can see cellulose in a bit more detail. So we've got our every uh, second glucose flipped. So these ones here and these ones here. And actually the uh, way that cellulose um, bonds together is via hydrogen bonds. So these uh, green sort of squares here represent hydrogen bonds between the layers of cellulose. So this top layer here is bonded to this layer down here via hydrogen bonds. So here you can see cellulose in even more detail. And we can say that cellulose is a long unbranched chain of beta glucose joined by 1,4 glycosidic bonds. And it stops cells from bursting under osmotic pressure by exerting an inward pressure or an inward force. So this stops water from going inside of the cells, which allows them to stay turgid and rigid and really maximizes the plant's surface for photosynthesis to occur effectively. So cellulose actually has straight glycosidic bonds, which means that the cellulose chains are straight as well. So 
there are about 50 to 80 cellulose chains which run parallel to each other. And as I said previously, these are linked together by a large number of hydrogen bonds. And these form what are known as microfibrils. And these are sort of strong threads and cross linkages. So now we're going to talk about glycogen. So glycogen is made up of alpha glucoses with 1,4 and 1,6 glycosidic bonds. And it's a long branch chain of alpha glucose and it has more 1,6 bonds. So therefore more branches than starch actually does. So similarly to starch, it has side branches which allow the enzymes to get to and break down the glycosidic bonds really easily so that the glucose can be released quickly. And this is important for energy release in animals. And it's also really compact, so it is also a good polysaccharide for storage. So I hope you've enjoyed my second video on carbohydrates. If you have and you found it helpful at all, then please make sure to give it a big thumbs up and comment down below. Also make sure to just subscribe, it really means the world to me. We are so, so close to 400 subscribers. And if you're not already, then feel free to go and follow me on Instagram at Biology with Gracie. And I look forward to seeing you in my next video. Bye guys.